I've been asked quite a few times to make a video on how to discharge a capacitor. So that's what this video is gonna be all about. And the reason this video is gonna be longer than 20 seconds is because I'm gonna be answering as much frequently asked questions regarding this topic as I can along the way. So to begin with, why do we even need to discharge the capacitor at all? Can't we just turn off the air conditioner? And the answer is no, because the capacitor, simply put, is like a battery, it stores a charge. So even if the unit is powered off, the capacitor is still charged. So if you touch it, you will get a refreshing zap. How do I know that? Well, of course, that's because I tried, and it does pack a pretty good punch. I think it's very, very rare for it to actually be fatal, but of course, we don't wanna try it on ourselves. Another question that sometimes comes up is, won't the capacitor automatically discharge if you just give it five or 10 minutes, let the unit power off and just stand there for a little bit? And the answer to that is also no, because a capacitor can store a charge for weeks or for months. And although there are some units where the motor will discharge the capacitor, I like to err on the side of caution and just discharge it anyway. It only takes a couple of seconds. If we open up an air conditioner, we're likely gonna see something like this, a capacitor with a bunch of wires going to it, and that's the fellow that we need to discharge. Now, as far as safety goes, the most important thing is to turn the power off and then make sure the power is off and then verify that the power is off, preferably with a multimeter or a voltage pad. If you forget to do so and try to discharge the capacitor while the power is on, whatever tool you're using is likely gonna get welded onto the capacitor. How do I know this? Well, unfortunately, I tried that as well. So do make sure that the power is off. The way I discharge a capacitor is simply by using a screwdriver. And let me pause here because I know some technicians will right away say, whoa, 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 Jay, that is not the technically correct way how to discharge a capacitor. And they would be right. The right way would be to use a pair of jumper leads and a resistor to discharge it. But personally, I have never actually used that method. I've always used either a screwdriver, a nut driver, or some needle nose pliers. The only thing you have to make sure is that the handle is plastic or rubber, so fully insulated from the shaft. So myself and all the technicians that I know, none of us use the technically correct way. I think it's an unnecessary step that's really not needed. And if you disagree with me, I won't be upset. If you desire to use this method instead, that's totally fine. There's some videos on how to do it this way as well. Or also on Amazon, I saw a capacitor discharge pen. That's pretty cool too, and it's a little bit less annoying than using the jumper leads. If you would like, check it out. I'll leave an Amazon link in the video description. Anyway, let's get back to showing you how most HVAC technicians do this. So to discharge a capacitor, all you gotta do is find the common first. These dual capacitors, they should be labeled. You got C for common, you got Herm for compressor, and you have fan for the condenser fan. All you need to do to discharge the capacitor is to take a screwdriver, a nut driver, or maybe a needle nose pliers, and short out the terminals between each other. You might see a little bit of a spark when you do this. And some people ask, how long does it take to discharge the capacitor when you do this? And the answer is, it's immediate. It discharges right away. The reason I rub it like this is just to make sure that I got a good connection between the two spades. And another question I get is, does it matter which spade I touch? See how there's four of them here? And the answer is no, it does not matter because all these spades are connected. If you look in the middle here, all of this is basically one piece of metal. So I can go from this side, from the top, or from this side, it does not matter. So you discharge the fan side, then you would discharge the Herm side the same way. If you accidentally go from Herm to fan, most likely nothing will happen, although there is a chance that you could damage the capacitor. Which brings me to another question. Some people ask, does the capacitor get damaged when you discharge it like this? And usually, no, it does not get damaged, but there is a slight chance that it could get damaged. The likelihood of that happening is very, very slim. I've checked many, many capacitors that were good after I checked them. So I don't think this happens very frequently. And the only way I think it would happen is if you discharge the capacitor, charge it up, discharge, charge it up, and just do it over and over and over and over again, then yes, you might damage it. But if you only do this once in a while, it's no big deal. And you also have to consider that if you're checking it, you're probably considering replacing it anyway. 
Now, if we get back to the capacitor situation that you would see inside of a unit, a furnace or an air conditioner, there will be wires going to it. Sometimes you can just leave the wires connected. Another question is, do we have to disconnect the wires? The answer is no. You could discharge the capacitor without disconnecting the wires. So sometimes that's possible. See how this one goes from here to here. This is the common and the one in the back is the Herm. I can just go straight across and discharge it that way. But if we were to go from common to fan, the insulated connectors won't allow me to do it. It can't really reach it. If these connectors were not insulated, if they were just metal, then you can just simply touch the two connectors and that would get the job done. But if they are insulated, then you will have to take some connectors off in order to discharge the capacitor. So just carefully reach in with a needle nose pliers and take those connectors off before you're able to discharge that capacitor. So I just took two wires off and now I can very easily discharge it like this. One more thing that I wanna point out is that not all HVAC units will have dual capacitors. Some of them will have single capacitors where instead of the three sections, there will only be two. In that case, it's the same exact thing. You just literally short them out to each other, the two of them. And once in a while, you'll come across capacitors that have a resistor. It's called a bleed resistor between the prongs. That little resistor is actually there to automatically discharge the capacitor when the unit is powered off. Now, typically that's supposed to discharge the capacitor, but personally, I don't trust it. I would rather be on the safe side and discharge it anyway, even if it's already discharged, just to make sure. And the last question. Jay, I just got a brand new capacitor from Amazon. Do I have to discharge it? Usually no, it should not have any charge in it because it was never connected to a power source. But you have to keep in mind that perhaps somebody bought it, used it and returned it. So it might actually have a charge in it. So once again, it only takes a couple of seconds. Just go ahead and double check and discharge it to be on the safe side. Well, and that is all I had on this capacitor topic. I by no means claim myself to be a capacitor expert. So if any of you out there are capacitor experts and you have some corrections to what I said, or you have some further tips, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out. God bless you all and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, let me tell you about a grandson and a grandpa. They go to a store shopping together and the little grandson is in the cart and he's behaving like a normal grandson, right? He's yelling, throwing tantrums, grabbing stuff off of shelves. And the whole time as the grandpa is walking through the store, you can hear him keep saying, John, it's okay. It's gonna be all right, John. Just keep in mind, John, we're gonna be home soon. This will all be over very soon. Stay calm, John. And throughout the whole store, this just kept happening. Finally, they got to the checkout, they checked out their stuff, and they finally go outside to the parking lot. At that point, a lady that was behind them in the checkout lane chases them down, and kneeling down to the little boy, she tells him, John, you have the best grandpa in the world. You should treasure him. He is so patient and so kind. At that point, the grandpa interrupts her and says, Lady, I think you misunderstood something. I'm John.